If you're looking for a breakthrough in your own personal life, maybe with anxiety or anger or addiction or bitterness or brokenness or whatever, well, you're in the right place because we're in part two of our series on spiritual disciplines. We're calling it Breakthrough Disciplines, and we're unpacking the ancient secret of what Jesus called life to the full. And today, we're going to talk about how to pray for breakthrough. So here's the big idea. If you're looking for breakthrough in your everyday life with your thoughts, your emotions, your habits, don't just try harder in the moment of crisis. The key is to train yourself on the spiritual disciplines. And today we're going to show you how to do that in the area of prayer. Now, the reason we're starting with the spiritual discipline of prayer is because this is something that everyone can relate to. Everybody prays, you know, maybe for some of you, it's just a prayer of desperation when you need an A on a test or you want that job. But the truth is, and I love this about the God of the Bible, is that God lets anyone pray to him. You don't have to be some spiritual giant to pray. Now, in this particular lesson, we're not talking about those desperation prayers. We're not talking about sort of those reactive prayers. We're talking about the spiritual discipline of prayer, which is more of a proactive thing. Here's our first tip. Find a time and a place that works for you. Start with five minutes a day and work toward longer times with God. Jesus himself had a time and a place for prayer. It says in Mark chapter 1, verse 35, before daybreak the next morning, Jesus got up and went out to an isolated place to pray. Notice, Jesus must have been a morning person because he prayed in the morning a lot of times, and he found an isolated place to pray. Now, in my own life, I have a prayer chair. In fact, it's right behind me here. I have a prayer chair where I like to spend some time in prayer. Some people like to go out in nature, take walks to pray. There's really no right or wrong way to do it. But I think it's helpful to find a time and a place to do it so that you can begin to make it more of a habit in your everyday life. And again, for those of you who are new at this, just try praying for a few minutes a day. Thinking about praying longer than that might be overwhelming to you. Just try to pray for a few minutes a day, and then every day, every week, just say, God, I'm going to give you just one more minute today, one more minute today, and pretty soon, you're going to be praying like a prayer warrior. Now, this next tip is just as practical. I encourage you to use music and scripture to get focused on God. Start by praising or thanking God before you ask him for things. Maybe you only think about prayer in terms of asking for a checklist of prayer items that you have. But prayer is so much more than that, as we'll see in just a moment. Now, I like to use music. I like to use scripture, kind of like this one here, Psalm 145. The psalmist writes, I will exalt you, my God and my King, and praise your name forever and ever. I will praise you every day. Yes, I will praise you forever. Great is the Lord. He is most worthy of praise. No one can measure his greatness. Now, did you know you can open your Bible and pray a prayer just like this? You can just read scripture and pray it as your prayer, especially for those of you who are new at this and you feel like I can't find the words. Many of the Psalms in the Old Testament are prayers or songs to God. And you can borrow those words until you get good with your own words. Now, in my own life, I like to use music. I like to use worship music. There's some great worship music out there. I like to pull a playlist up there on Spotify and worship God as I sort of set the tone for my prayer time with God. And here's a simple way to remember some of the elements of prayer, P-R-A-Y-E-R. Start with praise. Then spend some time repenting and asking God to show you where you've been wrong today or this week. Then spend some time asking for the things on your prayer list. And don't forget to yield and listen to God. And you should expect, as you pray, expect that God is going to answer. And then just repeat. Keep doing those things. Praise, repent, ask, yield, expect, repeat. Now, if you're like me, this next tip is going to be very helpful. If your mind wanders when you pray, don't panic. Let those thoughts help you focus on the things that need prayer in your life. John Ortberg, the author of The Life You've Always Wanted, said it like this, if my mind keeps returning to a particular topic during prayer, it's probably an indication that this is the topic that is of most concern to me and I need to talk to God about. This is probably the most practical tip for me, and I wish somebody would have told me this when I was 15, 16 years old, because my whole life, 
I've struggled with staying focused as I pray, and I'm always trying to sort of get rid of those distractions in my life. But what I've started to do recently is pay attention to those distractions and put them on the table and use those as triggers, as cues for my prayer time. Now let's drill down a little bit more with our last two tips. And here's the first, pray with boldness and intent. It's important for you to understand that God is not offended when we're honest about what's on our heart. Don't be afraid to tell God what's going on in your head or what's going on in your heart. I love this passage in Hebrews chapter four. The author writes, so then since we have a great high priest who has entered heaven, Jesus, that is the son of God, let us hold firmly to what we believe. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. Now here's the flip side of that point. We also need to pray with humility and submission. We need to learn to listen to God and be ready to hear what's on his heart. So yes, it's important for us to tell him what's on our heart and we can do that with boldness. But even more important than that, we need to hear what's on God's heart. This is the essence of prayer. This is the real attitude that we should have as we develop this spiritual discipline of prayer. Author Richard Foster writes, listening to the Lord is the first thing, the second thing, and the third thing necessary for successful intercession. And scripture itself says this in Matthew 6, 10, Jesus taught us to pray, may your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Not just my will, but your will. And one more verse, we'll end with this one. Matthew 26, 39, Jesus went a little further down and bowed his face to the ground and he prayed like this. My father, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. This is a perfect picture of how we should approach God in prayer. God, I want your will to be done, not mine. And when we pray like that, we are sure to experience breakthrough.